Man, the OKC Thunder could have been a sneaky play in tournament team this year, but just with the injury of Chet Holmgren, it's looking like it might be another tank year for the Thunder. So what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to another NBA 2K23 Rebuild, and today we are going to be taking control of the OKC Thunder. Now, I recently made a video on my second channel, go check that out, of ranking the best young cores in the league, and I had the Thunder in the elite tier, which I still stand by. They have Shaco Just Alexander, a player you can build around. They have great other players that could be a number two on a championship team eventually, we think, with their potential, like Josh Giddy, like Chet Holmgren. They have Lou Dort, who's off or on a new extension. 77 overall does seem kind of low 2K, but he is an all-world defender. You can see that A perimeter D grade there. Darius Basey, though, maybe hasn't worked out too much as maybe the Thunder would have hoped. Not great efficiency in his sophomore year or last year as well. So we'll see if he maybe jumps in his age 23 season. Either way, he's going to be uh, restricted to free agent at the end of the year. We'll see if we bring him back. We have a veteran like Derek Favors. I'm excited to use Trey Mann, who showed a lot of promise last year. Pukashevsky, similar maybe in the Basey boat, but uh, I think he does have a chance to get a second contract extension from us. I liked what I saw from Jer Jeremiah Robinson Earl last year, even Aaron Wiggins. Uh, Tail Maladon, man, after that. That rookie year they're like oh he showed some promise and then they have trey man josh giddy now it's probably not going to be in the long-term plans we have usman jang we have two jalen williamses even though 2k didn't put the second round one in the game okay like what if i wanted to use them all right 2k i see what you're doing but yeah let's see how this team is going to look like for chet's rookie year he unfortunately will not be playing as we all know what happened with that injury so yeah uh he won't be playing at all his rookie year we'll see how maybe 2k or how that affects his development like will he go down to like a 75 will he just be pissed and want a new trade or want to trade i don't know but either way we're going to keep this realistic we're not going to play him his rookie season so shay's getting about 37 minutes a night we're gonna do 34 to giddy and dort is cool with me 24 to Baisley. i guess Derek favors will start at the five but he's gonna probably play about 24 minutes a night as well usman jang i would like to give a decent amount of minutes to maybe like 20 we could probably do 24 to trey man make him the sixth man Pukashevsky can get about 17 a night. I don't think I'm going to play Aaron Wiggins. Uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl can get about 10. And then Jalen Williams, another lottery pick, he can get about 16. So, yeah, this team is not looking great with no uh, Chad Holmgren. I mean, even with Chad Holmgren, we might not even have made the play in tournament. So we'll see how this team develops in their, uh, or in a lot of players' rookie seasons, like Jalen Williams, Usman Jang. Uh, we're going to be balanced under Dagno, or do we want to be pace and space? We'll stick with balance. I mean, like I said, this year isn't going to be great. I think at the deadline, I will come back to you guys and see if I wanted to get maybe an asset for Darius Spacey, or if I'm just kind of, all right, maybe the Poku experiment isn't going to work out, move him at the deadline. So be on the lookout for that. And contract extensions, I don't know if we're really going to have anybody to deal with this season. So I will see you guys at the deadline most likely and no oh, maybe i should talk about just all the first round picks we have so it's gonna get kind of crazy uh we're gonna probably have to move these eventually to keep shea happy and i'm not gonna be drafting five players every year so i would like to maybe move them for a proven guy that's why i thought maybe the thunder should have went after dematis a bonus all right we're here at the deadline with a 16 and 38 record we are the second worst team in the western conference right behind the Utah Jazz, who I want to do like a realistic rebuild with in 2K23, but I also might use them as like my 82 no challenge with like all their new draft picks. Cause usually I'll do it with the Thunder, but no, I was like, I want to do like a realistic Thunder rebuild right now and build around Chet and Shea. So Chet's kind of up and overall and he hasn't played it all this season. So that is a good sign. Yeah, uh, we're not doing all too hot though. We're 22 games under 500. Shea's been good though. Uh, his three point percentage, not looking great. Uh, his true shooting's at 61%, but I don't know. When will the stats actually get us to the playoffs? Or is he a good stats, bad team guy? Uh, Lou Dort, I would like for that three-point percentage to be like where it was last year, but he's not off to a bad start. We know he's a great defender. Uh, Josh Giddy, 12.7 points, seven rebounds, six assists. His efficiency is much better than it was in his rookie year. That's a thumbs up from me. Trey Mann, I'm liking what he's doing off the bench. 39 from three, hell yeah. Darius Baisley probably isn't going to get a new extension from me, so I might move him right now. Usman Jang would like to see a little bit better efficiency. Poku, oh man, I might move him right now. Jalen Williams, okay. So yeah, uh, a lot of the young guys haven't been doing all too well. All right, so it's looking like we could snag a first round pick from the Milwaukee, Milwaukee Bucks in 2027, which could have some value later on. Brook Lopez is an expiring deal. I'll probably just release him um, when I make this trade because then I can play JRE a little bit more. Uh, we do have to give up the Washington second round pick in this draft, which might be good, but like 
we're gonna have so many picks in this draft. I don't need another second, so we can use that as an asset down the line. So we're gonna make that trade. Uh, I guess Milwaukee, you know, what? they get a little bit younger with Darius Baisley, and they might like him in their system. They can move maybe Giannis at the full time five. All right, I want to see if I can get the Warriors 2027 20, first round pick for Poku. Dennis Smith Jr. would make the money work. I don't know how he's two star value. We'd give up a second as well. Uh, they want JRE for Jermichael Green. I would say no to that, but I would be willing to give you. Hmm, do I have like a like a heat second that I don't really need? Aaron Wiggins, ah, to get the steal, get done. It's really just a first. Is it worth it? I mean, Aaron Wiggins might not even crack the rotation next year. He is 24. So you know what? We will do this trade. Michael Green, I don't really need to pay long term. So we are going to make that. All right. So I got two first round picks for Baisley and Poku. I'm going to release uh, Brooke Lopez. Unless I think I can get something for him, but let's see. Ooh, I can get a first round pick from the Grizzlies, but I don't really want to pay Covington about 12 million next year. Yeah, so I really couldn't find anything that I like. So I'll be nice to Brooke Lopez and I'm going to release him to free agency. All right, yeah, like this team is tanking very hard. So Chet, unfortunately, will not be in there. We'll probably have Jeremiah Robinson Earl as the starting center. We're probably going to have Usman Jang as the starting power forward. So yeah, like Derek Favors can come off the bench. We'll probably go 28 to the front court. We'll probably go 28 to Terrence or Trey Mann. I, did I say Terrence? Did not mean that. Uh, Derek Favors can get about 20 minutes. Uh, we'll probably go about 24 to Jalen Williams. We'll probably do like 15 to favors and then who gets the final spot it probably should be tail mount on just to see what he can do because i'm probably not going to be bringing back uh dennis smith jr next year so yeah this team is going to be bad we're 16 and 38 i don't know if this team's going to hit 25 wins so luca ends up winning mvp that's pretty usual after year one he averages some crazy almost 40 point triple double excited for that map zero jabari smith takes some rookie of the year wow okay maybe because chet didn't play ben simmons gets six men of the year don't know why he comes off the bench bonus highland gets most improved cool 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 I doubt we're going to see anybody on an all-NBA team or not. Um, I thought maybe Shea could have gotten like a third team, but we were just like one of the worst teams in the league. That really wouldn't have made a lot of sense. All-rookie first team, Ushman Jang makes it. Okay. Um, eight and a half points, four and a half rebounds. We'll hope that efficiency gets better in year two. Um, and Jalen Williams is the only player on our rookie second team. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we did not make the playing tournament, obviously. Our final record was... 25 and 57 the rockets were actually worse than us we tied with the jazz so we're probably gonna like the fourth or fifth projected pick going into the lottery we'll see if any of the scoring or uh, anybody stats not just scoring there's more to the league than scoring um changed chase numbers actually went down a little bit uh post deadline okay um yeah it's pretty similar though like we're really gonna have to improve the bench but i'm excited to actually use chet next year luka Doncic, western conference finals mvp and harden eastern conference finals mvp mavericks sixers finals and the sixers blew a 3-0 lead luka takes home mvp with a 38 point triple double and finals mvp with a 40 point triple double and came back down 3-0 like what i would love to do a career sim with luka in 2k23 because he's actually putting up like possible goat numbers like will chamberlain asked like were these even possible numbers so i don't really know what picks we're gonna have that's like protected i think a lot of them were lottery protected so i can really only us or see us having one maybe top five pick if ours does land in there and yeah that vucevic trade from the magic we're gonna talk about that one that was not like a great trade we'll get back on it because it was vucevic for one carter jr you can make kind of a debate who would you rather have for the bulls right now maybe on the defensive side, in Carter Jr. And then their first round pick in 2021, which ended up being Franz Wagner at, I believe, eight. And their first round pick in 2023, which I think is top four protected. So we'll see who that player ends up being. But yeah, and they had to pay Vucevic. Not great. All right, so we're getting here into the top five. The Pistons moved into the top four. I feel like we're going to probably end up with the fifth pick unless we get pretty lucky and we end up moving into the top four. Let's go. All right, so the Jazz end up at five. Are we going to end up at four or is our luck going to continue? And wow. It is the Rockets. Okay, so we're going to land with the top three pick. It does kind of show it in the bottom right quicker than we see it up there. So this is going to be the Thunder. Um, all right, that's fine. I'll take the third overall pick. Pistons won Magic 2. All right. Um, was this? No, Magic had... So yeah, basically the Pistons had the first round or overall pick in 2021, Magic in 2022. Thunder have yet to have the first overall pick, even though they had number two this past year. But do we have anything else? We have 18 via the Heat, 20 via the Nuggets, that is it right now. Okay. So I'm going to keep Mark Dagnall around. Even though he doesn't have the greatest ratings in the world, I'm not going to like fire him yet. But I would like to put a winning product on the court next year. Like I'm tired of being one of the worst teams in the league, or at least I'm sure Thunder fans are. So here we have three 18 and 20. We have an unprotected Pistons, Wizards, Clippers, Rockets. Oh my 
God, next year is going to be a bloodbath for us. I mean, in a good way. So with the third overall pick, I'm not looking at um, Scoot Henderson at all because we have Shea, we have Giddy. It's too crowded. So we're probably looking at a wing, like a Cam Whitmore. I doubt when Van Niyama falls to 30, but I would take him if he does. Uh, Derek Lively, another center, potentially Amari Bailey. I could look at potentially moving the pick. I don't know if that's a great idea, but say we threw out like three and like Usman Jang. Nothing. Three and Jalen Williams. Nothing. Could we even get anything for three? Lonzo, Jared Allen. Don't think the Cavs would do that. Wendell Carter Jr. I'm sure. I think the Magic would do that, but I don't know if I would want to do that. We can get Ben Simmons. He'd probably be. I don't know if he'd be a good fit. We do need some uh, four spacers. So yeah, let's make our pick at three. So with the number one overall pick, the Pistons take Scoot Henderson. I mean, they have a not like a hole at center because they have Isaiah Stewart and Jalen Duran, but. Take Victor Wembanyama. You have Caden Ivey in that backcourt, um, but okay. And then the Magic at two, they take Wemby. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So at three, is it going to be a Keontae George pick? Is it going to be a Cam Whitmore, Gregory Jackson? I've seen him win Rookie of the Year before. But if we look at the mock drafts, Whitmore was the projection by Draft Express. Nick Smith, I'd like more of a wing three slash four, honestly. Jerez Walker, I don't really want to take him. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, man. It really is. So I might take Cam Whitmore. Um, where's Derek Whitehead rated? He's rated 12th. Um, okay. Uh, Kim Whitmore is 6th, 11th, and 13th. I mean, Anthony Black is pretty consistent at 4. And why is he listed as a point guard? He's 6'7". He's like, I would move him to the small forward position. Uh, that's a little bit risky. I might take Keontae George, who's more, could be more of a 2. Uh, Whitmore's definitely a 3, but they are the same height. Eh, he's an inch smaller. Shorter. Uh, Mark Bailey could be the pick here as well. Um, do I take, it's between like these four. I don't know what to do. Oh man, I really don't. I wish we had maybe a better scouting rating on some of these guys. Damn, what was our scout doing? Um, Anthony Black, is that risky? Out of Arkansas? It's different. Let's take Anthony Black. Why not? All right, so that concludes the draft. Black's a 76. Yeah, you can see the drop off from these two. All right, Whitmore would have been a 75. Lively, 76. Keontae George, 75. Nick Smith, 78. But I wasn't going to take Nick Smith. Um, and then Whitehead was a 76 as well. All right. I don't hate the black pick. I mean, maybe I don't love it right now, but hey, he might be fine. But like, I guess Dort is going to start for us. Uh, we're going to decline the option on Maladon. Mm, not, he's only two mil. We'll bring him back, but he's probably not going to play. JRE, I mean, I'm hoping Jerry's not on the rotation. Like, I'm hoping we can upgrade. Um, and I do want to see if I moved Anthony Black to a small forward. He go. He stays at a 76. Perfect. All right, so free agency time. Do we have money to spend? I would hope so. Uh... We have about $30 million, which is a good amount. Am I going to spend it, though? Like, right now, we have our point guard. Like, we have our guards. Could get another point guard, but I'm fine. Small for... Oh, we just have a ton. Like, I don't... Like, does this move Jalen Williams or Usman Jang out of the rotation? I need a power forward. I mean, there's really not many ones that I love here. I could just not get anybody and wait till free agency next year. Or wait till we have all those draft picks and then trade for one. Which is viable, but it's like, do I... Like, I want to make the playoffs. Do I sign Jeremy Grant, bring him back to the Thunder on like a one-year deal worth $25 million, like a J.J. Redick Sixers deal? I could do that. He provides some good three-point shooting, some good defense. He's pro like I know he wants a long-term deal, but if I gave him a one-year deal worth about $25 million, probably would just be a strict one-year deal. Don't know if I'd bring him back long-term, but this allows us to have cap flexibility next year, and this allows us to really not be locked in, and I can use those picks to trade um and if grant doesn't work out he doesn't work out but i'd like to make the playing tournament next year so i wanted to sign someone let's go so chet progressed he's up to an 81 he didn't play at all last year giddy's an 85 she's a 90 it's looking good a lot of green around you love to see that all right so let's take a look at the rotation for season number two dort is not going to play as many minutes but we'll probably go 36 to shea 34 to giddy 28 to dort sounds good we could probably go 20 to grant we'll do 33 to chet want to play him a lot Trey Mann could probably get 25. I'm cool with Anthony Black getting 25 as well. Uh, Jamai Robinson Earl, 15. Usman Jang, 12. Yeah, uh, like Livingston, Baycott, two former first round picks that we just drafted aren't going to play. Does Jalen Williams not play? Or do I play Williams over Robinson Earl, who's listed as our backup center? I mean, Usman Jang is 6'10. He could get some backup center minutes. But if, say we went like 10 to him, say for. Mm, I don't know. I don't really know. <sighs> We could do something like that and play Williams nine minutes. Are we really going to get anything out of these guys? But we'll see. System proficiency is four-star balance now. 
Um, we'll see if Mark Dagno is going to be our head coach next year. If we don't make the playing tournament, he's definitely not going to be it. Um, if we don't make the playoffs, I'll probably think about it. So let's see how we do. And I'm hoping this Thunder team can be solid this year. So Luka Doncic puts up another crazy stat line. A 36-point triple-double. Gets some MVP. Scoot Henderson, the number one overall pick, ends up winning Rookie of the Year. Uh, I wonder that means, okay, I, Ivy's coming off the bench and maybe they have Shea or Shea, geez, Cade as the shooting guard. I mean, Ivy was great off the bench. So they have a three-headed monster with... She, or God, I keep saying Shea, Cade, Ivy, and Henderson. Chet, though, in his rookie season, don't know how he didn't win rookie of the year. Um, two games, probably not smart enough to realize that. But 15 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, two and a half blocks. He gets defensive player of the year. That is absurd. He doesn't make an all-NBA team, unfortunately. I thought maybe he had a chance. Uh, there's all-defensive first team with Chet Holmgren. There's all-defensive second team. Uh, we don't have anybody making that. All-rookie first team. Uh, we do not have Anthony Black making it. He's all-rookie second team wasn't too bad he is up to a 78 overall which is nice so uh but yeah Shaden sharp was there so where, where is chet home at? i don't know uh, we were the two seed we were 20 like 5 and 27 at one point oh my god wow we finished season 48 and 34 which isn't great but that's the two seed i guess i'll take that all right mark dagno you might be here to stay i did not think we were going to be that good uh shea was our winning score followed by home how did giddy do with his efficiency this year yes 49 from the field 31 from three much better 57 percent true shooting shea I don't know. He's an interesting piece. Not thinking I would ever move him, but I don't know. Is he the guy? He might be the guy. Uh, there's Jeremy Grant, who gave me a pretty solid season. Probably his one, one and done year in OKC. There is Trey Mann, 40% from three, 73% from the line. There is Lou Dort, 11 points, 42 from the field, 32 from three, 82 from the line. Black, uh, Usman Jang was much better efficiency-wise. Huh. I mean, his volume went down. Maybe that's why. There's JRE, and there's Jalen Williams, who probably, like, he was better too, but won't play for the playoffs. Like, I'm going to trim it down to an nine-man rotation. So that probably means he's the odd man out. I might just go 10 minutes to Zhang, and JRE will keep this at 25 apiece. Chet's going to get 36, 38 to Shea, 36 to Giddy, and then we'll do 30 to Dort and Grant. So in round one of the playoffs, we are taking on the Denver Nuggets. We have Jamal Murray, Dante DiVincenzo, MPJ, Gordon, Jokic, Najee, Bones, Kennard, and Muscala. I think we could beat them, but I wouldn't be surprised if they beat us. And we were up 3-0. They made it 3-2. We end up winning in 6. Okay. Shea had a pretty good round 1. So did Jeremy Grant against his former team. Love to see that. Chet averaged 17 and 15. Shot 40 from 3. Incredible. Even Giddy was great. All right, but now we're going to take on 2K's golden child right here. Vuka Dodge. What are those numbers? What are those numbers? Holy shit. That's insane. How is he only a 98? What does it take to be a 99? Um, and we end up winning in five, though. Okay, the Thunder are pretty good with Chet Holmgren. That's all we needed was Chet Holmgren. We would have made the playoffs last year. Jeremy Grant, though, he's been incredible for us in the playoffs so far. Now we're taking on the Golden State Warriors in the conference finals. Steph, Jordan Poole, Andrew Wiggins, Kuminga, Steven Adams. All right, like... It's a good team. Uh, I couldn't really do much of my Warriors rebuild, so watch them beat us here. And like, oh, this is all you needed to do to win it all. We're down two to one. We're down three to one. And we end up losing five, because of course we do. And then the semifinals, Chet was great. And eh, was he though? 41% from the field. What did he shoot from three? 26% from three. Shea was abysmal. I mean, Grant gave me a good playoff showing. Do I keep him? Nah, I don't know. Uh, so Garland was your Eastern Conference Finals MVP. Steph was your Western Conference Finals MVP. Oh, Warriors Cavs couldn't get enough of this in the 2010s. And the Cavs sweep the Warriors. And Garland is your Finals MVP. Maybe I should do the 82-0 challenge with them. Because they are just insane in the simulation. Kyle Lowry does retire, so it really didn't work out maybe with the Miami Heat. All right, draft lottery time. I don't even know what we could have in here. So we could have three, four, and five. All right, let's just simulate this lottery. Let's see what happens. And we end up with three, four... And, okay, so we don't get whatever that other pick was. That might have been from the Jazz. I don't remember. It was a lottery pick from some team. It has to be the Jazz. I don't think we had a magic pick there. But we do get the Pistons pick at 23 because I was actually lottery protected in real life. So I'm glad I don't have to go in and change it. We do have 18 via the Rockets from the Rush trade. All right, so we have four first round picks. All right, Mark Dagno is no longer or his contract is up. So we'll see if there's maybe a better option out there. And I really don't love anybody out here like Chris Quinn. I did offer a contract to Steve Nash, but I'm going to probably, yeah, he doesn't even accept it. I'm going to bring back Mark Dagno. He brought us to the second team. He brought us to the conference finals. All right, so I don't know, like we could move Livingston and Baycott. Do I, I probably should just, oh my. Goodness. We have five first round picks. We have picked 31 and pick 48. Living says a 75 overall. Like, I would not be like opposed to doing something like this. Okay, I can't even get an offer. What? Like, I don't think I could physically make all these draft picks. So I'm gonna try to just move them for future first. Like, yeah, yeah, get two future first in the future. So we're gonna do this with the Knicks. We're gonna be moving a 2025 second as well as pick 
Uh, 25, 31, and 48 for two future first round picks. It's to our collection. We're also going to be trading 18 and 23 to the Dallas Mavericks for two future first round picks. All right, so we are on the clock. Uh, Aaron Bradshaw and DJ Wagner go one and two. Let's see who's available for us at three that we can take. Xavier Booker is probably the pick here. 80 overall power forward, a position of need. That was a no brainer. And we're going to go Mackenzie McBacco here with our fourth overall pick. He was just like the highest rated guy there. So we end up with those guys. 80 overall and a 77. Was there a better option than McBacco? Not really. He was actually the highest overall remaining. As you could just hear the sirens in the background. And you might have even heard some construction. Ah, perks of living in the city, man. All right. So Giddy, Holmgren, Man, JRE, Usman Jang, and Jalen Williams. We're all going to pick up those options there. Some could be moved. I don't know if we have cap space because we can really build a sick team if we have cap space. I mean, do we have any? No, we don't. I guess we just have so many rookies that are making, like, a decent amount of money. Like, Dort's making 16 mil. I mean, if I'm... Yeah, like, they're making... This is $27 million, like, basically right here. Like, these four players are basically a max contract. All right, so if we look at our team now, before we even go into free agency, we have our point guard. I'm fine with man being the backup two off the bench. So, like, we're good there at the backcourt. We could look to maybe get a really good small forward and then we can have Booker and Holmgren in the front court. So if we are looking for a small forward on the market, let's see. Loki loved Jimmy Butler, but I just don't know if we have the assets to get him yet. That'd be really hard. Uh, I don't know who could play small forward here. Like, there's just not a lot of good small forwards listed in 2K, unfortunately. Like, you think I could pull off the... Well, he is a free agent, so that's not happening. I was going to say Anthony Edwards. Like, I don't want RJ or Milton or DeRozan. Not at all. All right, so let's see if we can get Jimmy Butler towards the end of his career. I have no idea if we could pull this straight off, but we're going to try it. So it's going to start with McBacco, who just went, not Shea. Uh, it's going to also be Jalen Williams. It's also going to be Usman Jang. How much are we off? And maybe we're not going to be able to pull this off. Like, I would have to probably include Dort in this trade, and we're still off by 7 mil. Never mind. So unless we can get a shooting guard that's like 6'6", six, six, that'll be comfortable putting at the three. Like, Jalen Brown would be maybe that guy, but he's under contract. We could go after Brandon Ingram. Hmm. What would it cost for me to get B.I.? Shea, Shea, Giddy, Giddy, and Shea. So let's see. I don't know if we can actually get there, but say we move Dort, Magbaco, Jalen Williams. Three for one, I feel like they'd say yes to this. He's in the last year of his contract. Yeah, let's get this deal done. Let's get this deal done. Boom. All right, so player progression, a lot of green. You love to see this. I think this team could maybe win a championship next year. Let's see how good Xavier Booker is in his rookie year. All right, so the rotation, wow, they want to play Giddy more. No, that's not going to be. So, like, Booker can get, like, 28. We're going to go 34 to Chet, 34 to Ingram, 34 to Giddy, 35 to Shea. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I'll lower Chet to 33 and Giddy to 33. Booker, 28 is good. Man could probably get 25. Jerry might be the backup center, so we'll hold off on changing his minutes. Um, I would like for Anthony Black to get about 23 a night. And then I guess that's it. I'm not really going to play, I guess, Baycott and Livingston again. So we'll go probably 16 to Zhang and then 13 to JRE. System proficiency is four-star balance. What are we pacing space? We are three and a half. Let's see how far this team can go. I mean, we were in the conference finals last year. We had a Brandon Ingram, Xavier Booker. Hope things change. I mean, we're just gonna call this the Luka Doncic Award. I, I I'm gonna do a 10-year rebuild with just the Magic or, or Mavericks, or maybe a 20-year rebuild just to just to see how many awards I can get with him. But Jin Chart wins. He was on like an all-rookie team last year, and he wins most improved this year. So shout out to him. We do get Chet Holmgren on all NBA third team, 16 and a half points, 11 rebounds, three and a half assists, a true shooting of 58%. He was incredible. We also get him on all defensive second team as well, and we do get Xavier Booker on all rookie first team. He was pretty good as a rookie. So we are the one seed in the Western Conference. We're taking on the Utah Jazz in round one. We went 57 and 25 with the second best record in the NBA completely. Shea was our leading score, followed by Brandon Ingram, then Chet then Giddy, who still averaged 16 points. His numbers went up still. Like, obviously, I guess Brandon Ingrams were destined to go down, but maybe I thought, like, Chets would go down. I mean, I guess Shays did go down as well. Booker was pretty good as a rookie, though. Trey Mann was still very efficient for us off the bench, at least from the field and from three. Not much from the line. This Jazz team has Kyrie Irving. Wow. Colin Sexton, Denny of Dia. All right. Uh, Gregory Jackson and Walker Custer. They have O'Shea Baji still, Jared Vanderbilt, Ron Holland. It's a fun team to rebuild, definitely. I'm excited for that one coming up soon. So we end up blowing them out in game one. Is this what we're going to see? Just everybody getting high teens and points? You know what? That's fine with me. And we end up, oh, we couldn't sweep them. But we gentlemen sweep the Jazz in round one, led behind Brandon Ingram. So now we're taking on the Golden State Warriors looking for revenge. But they got DeJounte Murray now. Maybe that's, oh, maybe that would have been the perfect guy to get in the Warriors rebuild. Huh. Like, great defender, good passer, good rebounder. Doesn't really need to space the floor too much because I do have Steph Curry playing next to him. Huh. 
All right, that 2K is making me look kind of dumb. And they beat us in game one by six. We were at home. All right, here goes nothing here. Let's see what... Okay, we end up losing five. You gotta be kidding me. All right, I see you. Jaws, your finals... Or no, he is your Western Conference Finals MVP. You have Magic Grizzlies in the finals and the Magic win in six with Ben Caro being your finals MVP. All right, I'm sick. I can't believe we lost in five. Maybe I should get DeJounte Murray on my team. Or maybe... Mark Dagno is not the coach as uh, Chris Paul goes to the Hall of Fame. No Draymond, though. Let's see where our lottery picks lie. And we have the fifth in this draft. We also have 17, 20 as well. You know what? Mark Dagno is going to get fired. I regret picking up last year. We could go after JB Bickerstaff. I mean, he's won Coach of the Year a couple times, but I don't know if he's the guy. He's a defensive minded coach as well. Like, I'm going to offer contracts to Ty Lu and Nick Nurse, two coaches that have won championships before. Yeah, I don't really want to give Chauncey Billups one. All right, can I please get one of those four, please? All right, we get Nick Nurse. That's fine with me. I'll take it. He was actually probably the guy I wanted the most out of those four. All right, so it is the 2025 NBA draft right now. Uh, Auto-generated class. It looks like this Darius Frazier guy could be the best player here. Brandon Ingram will be a pending free agent. Who knows? Maybe I don't bring him back. I don't know. Let's make our selections. All right, so Frazier was, yeah, the clear-cut guy, 82 overall. Murray Bridges looks pretty good as well. So we ended up with Farron Munoz. Not great, 74 overall, 22 years old. Uh, Giacomo Mancuso we got here, Mancuso. Uh, he's a 72 overall. Like, I could just leverage these three guys just to get maybe one player. Giannis is a free agent. Maybe I should have kept some cap space open. Uh, Gideon Mann are going to get the qualifying offers from me. I mean, I don't have the money to get Giannis. Oh, we're only off by 11 million. So if I moved Munoz and Baycott and like, or wait, you know what I could do maybe? Can we move Livingston, Meeks, and... Baycott, like three guys that might not have great value just for draft picks. All right, so I'm going to make this trade. I'm getting robbed. I'm giving the Mavericks a great deal here, but they're the only team that I find that can have cap space. Um, and we clear up over 10 million with this trade and they had the step and roll like up against them, which I'm trying to keep on this year just to make it a little bit more realistic. But I, I take off the trading restrictions. So yeah, uh, Giannis, we're about two mil off. I mean, I'm sure the Bucks have given him a real, oh, so many teams have. All right. All right, so I'm going to do this trade with the... I guess it's the, with the Mavericks again. Can we just do Munoz for... Oh, no, they can't. Okay, never mind. All right, so we're going to do this trade with the Timberwolves because we get Wendell Moore in this trade, who's still a solid player, and he was pretty good last year. And we clear up about $2.5 million. We do swap these picks with the uh, Timberwolves. I think we do get the better end of that. So now we can give Giannis uh, a decent amount of money. Uh, we can give him that player option, no trade clause. We can also give Tatum... I don't think Tatum's going to want to sign with us. Okay, that's unfortunate. Um, Kawhi, we'll see. He's got zero offers, so I don't really need to go after him right now. Same with Jalen Brown. Ah, oh, we don't get Giannis. He ends up signing with the Cavs. I mean, I guess that means the Cavs are going to lose out on Donovan Mitchell. Now, this would have been the opportunity to trade some players to the Cavs. Um, Kawhi doesn't have a real deal. Okay, that's fine. I mean, oh, but we have the cap holds on those guys. Hmm. Okay, um, maybe I didn't really think this one through too much. All right, so let's just see. Um, after free agency, or the first part. Okay, Giannis is still there. Um, yeah, we're going to go after Giannis. Uh, let's give him a player option, a no trade clause. Um, let's get, uh, let's see. I mean, like, Ingram still has zero offers. And, like, Giddy doesn't have an offer yet. Neither does Man. So, like, we're good there. Uh, Donovan Mitchell could be a plan B. I mean, say Jalen Brown, but Ingram would be the plan B. So, do we get Giannis? Damn it. That's with the box again. No, when I read out the rights on Ingram, I didn't mean to do that. Um, all right, let's just give Ingram like this. And I think I should be able to sign him back as well as keeping. I mean, it was worth a chance. I mean, can I sign Ugh, Ingram's? Ugh, no, we're so screwed. All right, well, I got a big giddy the max there. Uh, whoever offered him that, screw you. And I don't think I can bring back Ingram because I accidentally read out the rights on him. I'm such an idiot. And he goes to Boston. Okay, where did Tatum end up? <laughs> the Clippers. So nice. I kind of gave up, like, uh, all that just, like, with the uh, with the Mavericks. They think I'm going to get Giannis, and they don't even get Giannis. I mean, player progression still looks really good. Like, Shea, Giddy, and Czech could still carry us. So, yeah, that Brandon Ingram trade was a big flop. Because also, my dumbass didn't freaking uh, sign him. I renounced the rights on him, so I couldn't give him a deal. He had a $50 million cap hold, and then Giddy gets that max offer, so I had to match that. All right, so Shea, 36, 34 to Giddy. I would like to go maybe 27 to Black. We'll do 32 to Chet, 27 to Booker. Hmm. Trey May can get about 24, 23 to Wendell Moore. I'd like to go 29 to 
30 to Booker. 27 to Black. Let's see if this team maybe works out better. Maybe there was just too many guys here with Brandon Ingram. We're going to be balanced. Four and a half stars. Let's hope for the best. All right. So in the final season, Wuka just wins MVP each year. Frazier, who was the number one overall pick, gets uh, rookie of the year. Six man of the year is Jaden Ivey. How is he coming off the bench? He's insane. Keontae George most improved. Maybe I should have taken him over Anthony Black. But I guess Anthony Black, we kind of messed up his development. Like, did we really need Brandon Ingram? No. We didn't have, like, a true number one score, but Xavier Booker looks like he's pretty good. He's already an 85 overall. All right. They still have DeJounte Murray. They got Steph Curry. They have Baba Miller. Jalen Williams? Wait. Oh, no way. So I, like, was he a free agent? Because he was never on my team. This is our Jalen Williams. So Jalen Williams Adventures. They have OG and an OB off the bench. Are you kidding me? Are they going to beat me three years in a row? Please don't. Oh my god, we win in seven. Why did that have to be so close? Are you kidding me? I hate that so much. Now we're going to take on Zion and the Pels. I mean, at least they're not... Oh, no, it's not just Zion and the Pels. It's Zion and Anthony Edwards. God damn it. God damn it. Why can't we catch a break? Oh my god, we win in six though. This is a very impressive finals track if we're able to beat Memphis. Uh, in round two, Shea averaged ten and a half assists. All right, now we're taking on the Grizzlies. They made it to the finals once in this video, maybe even twice. Can we maybe make it for our first time? We're up 3 0, don't blow with 3 0 weed, and we make it to the finals. Shea gets Western Conference Finals MVP, Halliburton Eastern Conference Finals MVP. And here we go Thunder versus the Pacers, NBA's marketing dream. Two mega markets here in the finals. They got KP, they have Matherin, who's just an 83, but he's been playing like a 90 overall. But yeah, let's see. Can we beat them? We do lose game one. We lose game two. Okay, two to one. We're starting Usman Jang at the three. Why not? Can we maybe tie it up two to two? Yes, we can. Can we go up three to two? Okay. And oh my God, we're going to a game seven of the NBA finals, please. I didn't win it in the Warriors one. I embarrassed myself there. Can we not lose this one? Oh my God, we're going to lose. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. Reverse psychology. Oh, we lost by two in game seven. Oh, I don't want to play this anymore. Oh my god, we were that close. Usman Jang drops 39 in game 7, and we end up losing. Well, the Indiana Pacers win the 2026 NBA Finals. Benedict Matherin was your Finals MVP. Very deserving. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. I'm not always going to win these, but I'm um, not always going to lose them. But I'm on a two-rebuild uh, losing streak. We won in the Knicks rebuild. Like, if we're doing modern-day rebuilds, we won in the Knicks we lost in the Warriors, and we lost in the Thunder. And in the historic ones, like we won with MJ, we won with Shaq and Kobe. But yeah, we're 1-2 in modern day rebuilds. Let's let's maybe do an 82 and 0 rebuild soon so I could just like 3 But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy. Drop a like if you did. Let me know what team we should rebuild next down below. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.